Hey, hey, coding fam! I'm Kehlani, and I'm your host for Code Along with Black Girls Code. Today is going to be super fun because it's all about fashion, honey. Fashion. Do you like picking out a new outfit each day or dressing up for a special occasion? I know I do. So today, we'll be creating a dress-up game in Scratch. We'll select a variety of clothing items and costumes and place them on screen. Then we can mix and match what pieces we want our sprite to wear. Sounds like fun, right? Let's get coding! Before we dive in, make sure to like this video and subscribe so you never miss an episode. Let's go to scratch.mit.edu and log in. If you're new to Code Along in Scratch, make sure to check out this video to learn how to make an account. It's also a great episode to review if you need some help learning the basics in Scratch. Now, I'm going to create a new project. You can do this by clicking on File, then New. In our project today, we're going to use conditionals and operator blocks. Conditional statements allow the code to make a choice when a certain condition is true in a project. Operators help us to perform mathematical functions in a project, like checking if a value is greater than, less than, or equal to another. First, let's pick out a backdrop for the dress-up game. Remember, we're going to be placing our sprite and each clothing item on the screen, so you may want to pick a neutral background image, but it's totally up to you. Click on the backdrop icon to select the background image from the gallery. I'm going to select the stripes backdrop for my dress-up game project. Once we have our backdrop set, let's add a sprite to the project. Go ahead and delete the scratch cat from the project and click the cat icon. Click the Fashion tab at the top of the page, then select your sprite. I'm picking the Harper sprite, and choose whichever costume you prefer. I'm choosing Harper B. Even though we're talking about dress up today, remember costume in Scratch doesn't mean what your sprite is wearing, it's the physical position of the sprite. For example, if I were a sprite, this could be Kehlani left, and this could be Kehlani right. Now let's get to coding. Let's place the sprite on the left side of the screen so we have plenty of room to place each clothing item on the right side. Then I'm going to add when green flag clicked and go to XY blocks to initialize the sprite's position. Lastly, let's place the sprite in the back layer so that all the clothing items appear on top of the sprite's image. Go to the looks tab, then place go to layer underneath the go to XY block. Select back from the dropdown. Now for the fun part, Let's pick out all the different outfit choices. Let's create a new sprite for each different item of clothing. Each clothing item should have multiple costumes so that the user can toggle between the different options. Click the cat icon and then select the fashion tab at the top again. Add as many clothing types as you'd like to include in your project. I'm going to add a hat, a shirt, shorts, glasses, and shoe sprites to the project. Also, if one of the sprites doesn't have multiple costumes already built in, you can duplicate the costume and use the Fill tool in the Paint Editor to change up the look of that clothing item sprite. Let's initialize each sprite by setting the position and starting costume. First, drag each clothing sprite to the correct position on the right side of the screen. Be sure to leave enough space so that the user can view all the clothing choices at once. From events, drag a when green flag clicked block into the first clothing sprite's code editor. I'm going to use the hat sprite. Then drag a go to X, Y block from the motion tab underneath. From the looks tab, drag a switch costume to block underneath. Select the first costume option in the dropdown. Repeat this process for each clothing sprite added. The most important part of a fashion show is to try all the clothes on. When the clothing item is clicked, let's display it on a sprite. Let's test this out on the hat sprite. From the events tab, I'm going to drag a when the sprite clicked block into the hat sprites code. Then I'll drag the hat to the correct position on top of the sprite. After, I'll add a go to XY block underneath when the sprite clicked to update the sprite's position. So cute! Our sprite is looking very fashionable in her hat. 
I want the sprite to only try on one item at a time, so let's return the hat to its starting position when the sprite is clicked again. To do this, let's use an if-then-else conditional to help the code make a decision. If the clothing sprite is currently placed on the person sprite, let's reset its position. Else means that the clothing sprite is in its starting position and can be tried on next. From the control tab, drag an if then else conditional underneath when the sprite clicked. Place the existing go to xy block inside the if opening, then duplicate the clothing sprite's starting position go to xy block and place it inside the else opening. Then open operators and drag a value equals 50 block into the if condition. Scroll to the bottom of the motion tab and place an x position bubble on the left side of the operator block. Then update the value on the right side to the same X position value that's in the go to X Y block in the else opening. This will check where the clothing sprite is currently placed and update its position accordingly. Be sure to test out the code and make sure that the clothing item's position is updating correctly on screen. Then repeat the step for each clothing item. Now, I'm going to let you in on a little secret that's going to help us work smarter, not harder. The scratch backpack. This isn't your typical backpack like one you'd wear to school. This is a backpack that can store the code from one sprite and transfer it to another. I'm going to use the backpack to copy over the code that we just added to the hat sprite to the other clothing item sprites. Now I'll drag each set of code and place it on top of the sprite I want to transfer it to. Now, I need to update the X and Y position values for each sprite once the code has been transferred over. What if we don't like the hat that's shown? Let's use the space key to change the costume of the clothing item sprite to show other options. From the events tab, drag a when key press block into the first clothing sprite's code. Then drag an if conditional from the control tab underneath. Duplicate the operator block x position equals negative 150 from the existing if then else conditional and place the duplicated block inside the if condition. From the looks tab, drag a next costume block into the if conditional opening. Test out the code by pressing the space key. Let's use the code backpack to add this code to the other clothing item sprite. Remember to update the position used inside the operator block. Once you've added the code to each clothing sprite, test out placing each item on the sprite and pressing the space key to change that costume. Notice that the clothing only changes if it's placed on the person sprite. Maybe we should make something happen when the outfit is complete. Let's create a button that will display each clothing item on the sprite at the same time to show the user the complete outfit. Let's create a new sprite by hovering over the cat icon and then selecting paint. The new sprite will be a button that says Save Outfit. I'm going to use the rectangle tool to first create a background for the text. Then drag it over to the center onto the canvas, like this. Then I'll add the text. First, I'm going to change the color to white so we can see it against the background. Then I'm going to place it inside the rectangle I just created and type Save Outfit. I can use the Select tool to resize either shape too. Once the sprite is created, let's go back to the code editor. Then add a when green flag clicks block and a go to XY block to set the sprite's position. When the user is ready to show the outfit, let's have the person sprite respond. In the save outfit sprites code, open events and drag out a when the sprite clicked block. Then add a broadcast block underneath to send a secret message when the user clicks the save outfit button. Click the drop down and create a new broadcast message called Show Outfit. When the user is ready to show the outfit, let's display all the outfit choices on the person sprite. 
In the first clothing item spray, drag out a When I Receive block from events. In the drop down, select Show Outfit to make something happen when the sprite receives the secret Show Outfit message. Duplicate the Go to X Y block that places the clothing item on the person's sprite, then drag it underneath the When I Receive block. Let's add this code to each clothing sprite, then press the Save Outfit button to test it. We're almost finished! We need the person sprite to share directions at the beginning and tell us how much they love their outfit at the end. On the player sprite's code, open looks and drag say and wait blocks underneath when green flag clicked. Add multiple blocks to share directions with the user when the project starts. I'm going to give the user a little bit of context about the goal of the project. Then I'll tell them how to select the outfit by clicking on each item, to use the spacebar to rotate through, and to use the Save Outfit button once the outfit is complete. Then drag out a When I Receive block from Events. Select Show Outfit from the dropdown, then add another Save for 3 Seconds block underneath. Add a message that gives feedback to the user once the outfit's been displayed. Let's take a moment to celebrate everything we accomplished today. We use event blocks to make things happen, like changing a sprite's position when it's clicked. We use motion blocks to set and access a sprite's current position, giving us full control over its movements. We use looks blocks to update a sprite's appearance by switching costumes, adding style and personality to our projects. We use control blocks to make decisions in our code, triggering actions based on a sprite's position or other conditions. And we use operator blocks to perform math functions, opening up endless possibilities for logic and creativity in our projects. To save the project, click File in the top left corner, then select Save Now. Once your project is saved, let's share it with the Scratch community. If you haven't done so already, be sure to give your project a descriptive title, then click the Share button to the right of the title. Once we've saved and shared our project, let's view the project page to add the instructions, notes, and credit sections. In the instructions section, I'll add directions to tell the user how to play this interactive game. In the credits section, I want to thank anyone who helped me create this project and give credit to any sources I use. Check out the link below to view the code for today's project. Remix it and have fun making it yours! Now I'm feeling inspired to pick out something fancy to wear to school tomorrow. I'll see you next time, coders!